All right, engineers, what we're going to do is we're going to continue with our last video that we talked about when we went over all the different introductory material into pH and pOH and what are acids and what are bases. What we're going to do now in this video is we're going to focus specifically on calculations because that's the best way to get good at chemistry. So what we're going to do first is we're going to zoom in here and we're going to talk about strong acid and strong base calculations. But if you remember, what were those strong acids and what were those strong bases? Just real quickly. Again, strong acids would be hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid, right? Uh, perchloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid. Those are your six strong acids. And if you remember your strong bases, those are sodium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, rubidium, strontium, barium, calcium. We already said that those are strong acids and strong bases. Now, when we're doing these calculations, we're only ever going to be doing the pH or the pOH, equaling the negative log of the respective ion, whether it be H plus or hydroxide. Let's go ahead and dive right in, and we'll see what I'm talking about. So let's read this first question. It says, find the pH of a 0.04 molar solution of uh, perchloric acid. Sorry, perchloric acid. What is the pH? And identify the acid-base conjugate pairs. So let's go ahead and do this first. Ready? So if we have perchloric acid, HClO4, what does an acid do? According to Bronsted Lowry, he says that an acid will donate a proton, right? It gives up a proton. So what will this guy look like then? He'll give up H plus and he will give up ClO4 negative, right? Which is our perchlorate. Now, if we really wanted to be specific in this actual example and we wanted to make sure that we, we actually identified both conjugate acid base pairs, I could really react this perchloric acid with water if I wanted to. And remember, if the perchloric acid is, it's, if he's acting as the acid, he's donating a proton onto H2O. And technically, H2O will become H3O plus, which is our hydronium ion. So let's go ahead and do it this way that we're very specific. Okay, before we do the pH, let's identify our acid base and our, their conjugate pairs. So again, we already said that this guy, the perchloric acid, he's our acid. He's our strong acid, right? And then if he's the one that's donating the proton, someone has to accept that proton. And the water was the one that accepted the proton. So he's a bronsted lowry base. Okay, now, what happened to the perchloric acid? He became perchlorate. Now, perchlorate is going to be what's called the conjugate base. And you can identify that because bases are usually gonna have some type of negative charge. So this guy right here is the conjugate base. And then if you look over here, water was acting as the base, but when he accepts this proton, he becomes the conjugate acid. So this guy right here is the conjugate acid. Okay, so we identified now their pairs. So again, what would happen here? Hydrochloric, I'm sorry, perchloric acid would actually, its conjugate acid base pairs would be perchloric acid and the perchlorate. And then the water and the actual H3O plus or the hydronium ion would be the base conjugate acid pair. All right. So now that we've done that, now we have to use a specific formula. We're looking for the pH. So the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out here, what do I have to do here? Well, first off, this arrow, I shouldn't have drawn it this way. This isn't an equilibrium. Because it's not an equilibrium, all of this perchloric acid completely disassociates. So because of that, because he's a strong acid, it should be a one arrow movement. It should only be proceeding in the product direction. And the reason why is because perchloric acid is a strong acid, all of the hydrogen ions in this perchloric acid will disassociate into H3O plus and into the perchlorate ion. So this is a, just a one directional reaction. Therefore, the concentration of our perchloric acid here is the concentration of our H plus or H3O plus concentration. So what's the formula for pH, if you remember? pH is equal to the negative log of the H3 H3O plus concentration. What I already said here is that since, since this perchloric acid is a strong acid, all of these protons go into forming H3O plus. So that means that this concentration here, perchloric acid, is the concentration of our hydronium ion. So that means pH is equal to the negative log of 0.04 molar solution, right? And then what would that be? Well, let's go ahead and plug that into the calculator. So if we take our calculator here, we're going to say that negative log 
of 0.04 molar solution is equal to 1.39, right? Well, we're going to go ahead and round that up and just say it's 1.4. So it's a pH of 1.4. Now, if you remember based on that other video, we said that a pH of 1.4 was identified as being very acidic. It was identified as being very acidic. And this should make sense because what are we dealing with? We're dealing with perchloric acid, which is a very strong acid. So we want this to be more in the acidic range, okay? So that's how you do this one. So let's go ahead and move over to the other one, which is now we're just going to be shifting from doing a strong acid calculation to a strong base calculation. Okay. Same thing here. Let's go ahead and write out the equation here. What do we do? We take sodium hydroxide. We're going to take that sodium hydroxide and we're going to react that sodium hydroxide with water. Now what happens is, is this sodium ions right here, right? It's actually, what's going to happen is, this actual hydroxide, he's actually going to get released out of here, okay? So what you're going to get out of this, let's actually not even show the water in this one. Let's do this another way. Let's say we actually take sodium hydroxide and we just break this guy up without even putting it in water. We just disassociate this guy. So let's just say that we take this sodium hydroxide and it completely disassociates. It shouldn't be a double arrow like I did before. It shouldn't be a double arrow. It should only be a one directional arrow only going to the products. Why? Because sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So all of it completely disassociates into what? It disassociates into the sodium ions as well as into the hydroxide ions. Okay? So in this, what did we produce out of this? We took sodium hydroxide and it completely dissociated into an aqueous solution like water and produced sodium and hydroxide. Okay. Now, now that we've done that, we know, just like that we did with the, uh, the uh, perchloric acid calculation, that since this sodium hydroxide, all of it disassociates into OH ions, what does that mean? That means that this molarity of the sodium hydroxide is equal to the molarity of the hydroxide ion concentration. So what do we use for this formula? Well, we only can do with OH, we have to use the calculation called POH. And POH is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. That's the only formula that we can use here. So what do I need to do? I need to plug this number into that equation. So let's go ahead and do that. So POH is equal to the negative log of the 0.028 molar concentration of hydroxide. Then what do we got to do? We got to plug that in the calculator. So let's go ahead and do that. Negative log of 0.028 molar concentration gives us what? It gives us 1.55. Let's write that down. 1.55. But we're not done. And why? Because this is the pOH. I didn't ask for the pH. I asked for the, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't ask for the pOH. I asked for the pH. So now we have to go back and remember another formula from the introductory video, which was pH plus pOH equals 14. So what do we have here? We have 1.55. And then we have pH. Well, how do we solve here? We subtract over the 1.55. And if we subtract over the 1.55, what do we get? pH is equal to, let's go ahead and plug this in the calculator. So we'll take 14 minus 1.55, and we get 12.45. Okay, so that is the pH. Now, again, this should make sense. Why? Because we're dealing with a strong base. And if we remember from our pH scale, as you approach 14, it's becoming a more basic solution, so higher in hydroxide concentration. So this is a basic solution. That should make sense. Okay, now that we've done our strong acid and strong bases, let's go ahead and do two more, but a little bit different. It varies in a little bit more difficulty, but not too much. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take this barium hydroxide, and we're gonna react this barium hydroxide in the same reaction here, but watch what's, watch what's a little bit different in this one. A little bit different in this one. So I'm gonna take here, I'm going to do this one in red, guys. I'm going to take barium hydroxide. Okay. Now, this two is very, very important. What happens? Same thing we said before. He's a strong base. What does that mean? Again, all of him completely disassociates into hydroxide ions. So what are you going to get of this? You're going to get Ba, which he's always a two plus metal. And then you're going to get hydroxide. But here's the kicker. You see I have two hydroxides here, and I only have one hydroxide there. What do I have to do then? I have to put a two in front of it. So now, we're going to follow the same formula that we did before. This is a strong base. If it's a strong base, what do we say? 
we use the POH. POH is what? Equal to the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. Okay, well the hydroxide ion concentration is 0.03. Doesn't seem that bad, right? Well, you'd be wrong if you just put that. Why? Because there's two of these hydroxides. So because of this barium hydroxide, whenever it just one of these disassociates, it disassociates into two hydroxide ions for every one barium hydroxide. So this isn't just 0.03, this is 0.03 molar times two. Okay, because we have to account for that two coefficient in front of the hydroxide. So now if we go ahead and plug this into the calculator, what do we get? Okay, so we gotta take 0.03, we gotta multiply it by two, and then we have to take the negative log of that number. Well, what do we get? We get 1.22. So that's our POH. So our POH out of this is 1.22, but we're not done. Again, we still have to do one more thing. What else do we have to do? I didn't ask for POH, I asked for pH. You have to use that formula. That it's pH plus POH equals 14. So then what do I have to do? pH is equal to, you already know the formula, I'm going to take 14 minus 1.22 because that's my pOH. And then what will I get out of this? Okay, 14 minus 1.22, I'm going to get 12.78, but we're just going to round that to 12.8. So that gives me 12.8, and that's my pH. Now, should this make sense? Yes, it should. Why? because we're dealing with a strong base. And again, if you look at the pH scale, what will that mean? It should be more approaching 14. And if you compare this with sodium hydroxide, it should be more basic. So why should it be more basic? Because we're accounting for two of these hydroxides where versus sodium hydroxide, you only had one. So this should be more basic and this should make sense. Okay? All right, so now that we've done that one, again, this should verify that this is a basic solution. All right, let's do our last one here, and then we're going to move on to the next video, which is going to be acidity and basicity of salts. Okay, next one. Calculate the pH of a 4.5 times 10 to the negative 2 molar uh, um, sulfuric acid solution. So again, let's go ahead and do this reaction. So we'll take this H2SO4, and we'll, we'll show it with water. We'll do it with water because it's good to show it for this one here. What will happen? It's a 1 directional arrow, only unidirectional because it's going to be a strong acid. What does that mean again? I'll keep repeating it so that it gets drilled into you guys' head. Is that what? It completely disassociates, okay, into all of the H plus ions and then your conjugate base over there. So what will you get out of this? H2SO4 will form H plus and so that H plus, what will happen? This H right here We'll actually get one of the H's will get passed on to the H2O, but this is a diprotic acid, we said. So that means when he's a diprotic acid, he can give up two protons. So if he gives up two protons here, let's say that we do the first one, and then it does the second one. So what will you get out of this? If this guy gives up an H, you get H3O plus, and then also you'll get the conjugate base, which is sulfate, SO4, two negative, assuming that it undergoes all of its uh, deprotonation, in other words, giving up its protons. So if all of these protons are given up completely, okay, what's going to happen? This is going to produce hydronium and sulfate, but it's going to give you two hydroniums or two H plus ions. This is just like the barium hydroxide calculation. So what are we going to do? We're going to take the formula pH is equal to the negative log of the H3O plus concentration. Well, since this is a strong acid, all of him completely disassociates into H3O plus. So what does that mean? pH is equal to the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration, which is 4.5 times 10 to the negative two molar. But we're not done because we have to count for this two there. So we have to multiply this by two. And if we do that, what will our pH be? if we calculate this out. Let's go ahead and plug this into the calculator again, guys. So we'll take two times 4.5 second e to the negative two, and then we're gonna go ahead and take the negative log of that answer, and you get about 1.05. So we'll say about 1.05. Okay, and that's, that should make sense. Why? Because if you compare this with the actual perchloric acid, what do we get for the perchloric acid? We got 1.4, right? This one we got 1.05 and that should make sense because you're having more deprotonation of this H2SO4. 
Okay, so this is gonna be 1.05, which just helps us to know that this is acidic. All right. All right, guys, so pretty much in this video, what we were able to do is we went over four different examples, very simple calculations. We'll get more uh, complex as we continue to move forward throughout these videos, but it's just covering strong acid and strong base calculations. I hope that helped, engineers. Next video that we're going to do, I want you guys to click up on the right icon. We're going to go ahead and cover the acidity and basicity of salts.